This is my entire Jurassic World Epic Evolution collection, and I'm gonna show you all of them from biggest to smallest. The first and largest is the Ruthless Rampage Allosaurus figure. This figure is one of my largest Allosaurus figures and features updated coloring. It has some darker brown along the bottom and sides, and then this blue on the top. It also has its evolving spikes on its back that you can pop out, and there's a little spinning dial on its back for the chomping and sound effects. And one thing you'll notice about the Epic Evolution Collection are these new style of teeth. They're rubber and they look a whole lot more realistic. So let's put this Allosaurus over here as our biggest dinosaur. Next in size is this gigantic Trackers Neovenator dinosaur. And this is quite a different looking dinosaur. It has some pretty cool coloring with the teal and the purple mixing. It has these evolving spikes that you can pull right out of its head. And you can move the arms and legs on this figure. And then there's the dial on its back for the chomping and attack actions. So we're gonna put that right next to the Allosaurus and you can already see the size difference between the two. The Neovenator still is a pretty sizable figure, but it's probably maybe half the size of the Allosaurus. The next dinosaur in this epic evolution collection is the Wild Roar Megalosaurus figure. I don't have that many dinosaur figures that are in this interesting brown-orange coloring, as well as the yellow dots on its back. But you can move the arms on this figure, you can adjust the legs, and then there's the dial on its back for the chomping and this one comes with sound effects. Now let's go ahead and put this Megalosaurus in line next to the Neovenator dinosaur. And it looks like both dinosaurs can be kind of around the same height, but you'll notice that the Neovenator dinosaur is a bit bigger in the body overall. So you can see the size difference between the two right there. The next biggest dinosaur is this Wild Roar Ecrixinatosaurus dinosaur. Personally, I think this looks quite a bit like a Scorpius Rex dinosaur in its height and its body shape. And this dinosaur figure features the gray body with the light blue striping along its back and its neck, and then the darker detailing along its face. And check out all those spikes along its head. And just like the others, you can move the arms, the legs, and you can actually twist the tail on this one. And then there's the dial on its back for the chomping actions. This one's got sound effects too. So let's place the Ecrixinatosaurus next to the Megalosaurus. Check out that size difference there. Very similar, but a little bit smaller. Now here is our first quadrupedal dinosaur of this epic evolution collection. This is the gigantic Trackers Triceratops, but this is no normal Triceratops. They designed this new figure quite a bit differently than the old versions. Look at all this armor plating and the design of its skin all over its body. That is quite a bit different compared to a normal Triceratops. Now since it's a triceratops it of course has the three horns on the front of its head but there's actually some hidden spikes that you can pop out of the top of its frill so it evolves for added defense and then there's the dial on its back for a headbutting and stabbing action now let's place this Triceratops next in line, next to the Ecrixinatosaurus. And you can see the height difference between the two right there. The Triceratops is a little bit smaller. However, in terms of body size, I think the Triceratops is the winner. You can see the difference in the shape of the body between the two. So the Triceratops may be larger overall, but it is the shorter dinosaur, and that's how we're ranking them here. The next in size is a dinosaur that looks kind of like a Stegosaurus, but is actually called a Hesperosaurus. It stands on four legs, it's got this dark green coloring with the brighter green along its plates, and it has the spikes at the end of its tail, similar to a Stegosaurus. And you can adjust both the front and back legs on this figure. Sadly, you can't move the head or the neck around. And don't forget that this one also has this spinning dial on its back, but this time it activates its tail for a swinging action. So let's place the Hesperosaurus next to the evolving Triceratops. And you can see that the Hesperosaurus is only slightly shorter than the Triceratops. And I think the Triceratops definitely has more body mass than the Hesperosaurus. But nonetheless, it is the shorter one, so we'll place it right here. Now this next dinosaur is not from the Epic Evolution Collection. It's actually from the Legacy Collection. But I just bought it and I wanted to include it in this video anyways. This is the Momenchisaurus dinosaur. So let's open it up and check it out. Thank you. 
And here is the full-size dinosaur. It hardly even fits across my table. It is so long. This figure is 49 inches long and might rival the Dreadnoughtus dinosaur that I have that is also super long. And the coloring looks a little different compared to many of the other super-sized dinosaurs that I have with this brown striping that goes all the way down. And I think it has a much smaller face compared to many of the other quadrupedal giant dinosaurs that I have. Now this is obviously the largest dinosaur so we're gonna put it at the very front up here. Here's that Allosaurus that we saw at the beginning, and now let's compare that to this huge Mamenchisaurus dinosaur. Look at that, its head is way up there. Next up in size is the Poposaurus dinosaur. This dinosaur is specifically from the Danger Pack toy line, and it features some gray-blue coloring with some orange-brown detailing on its tail as well as its face. And you can move the mouth, the neck, the legs, and the arms, but sadly there is no action feature for this dinosaur. So let's place the Poposaurus next to the Hesperosaurus. And check out that size difference between the two right there. The Hesperosaurus is way taller, both in height and in body mass. Next up in size is another Stegosaurus looking dinosaur. This one is called the Tojangosaurus. This figure is from the Strike Attack toy line. It features some pretty cool coloring with a light tan that fades into the darker with the black and then its plates are this orangish brown coloring. And since it's from the Strike Attack series, when you press down on its body, it has that hidden attack feature. Look at that tail spinning. So let's place it next in line, next to the Poposaurus. And looking at the size difference between the two, they're very similar. The Poposaurus, I think, is a little bit taller. And in terms of body mass, I think the Hesperosaurus might be a little bit larger, but they're quite similar. Next in size, also from the Strike Attack toy line, is this Guaybasaurus dinosaur figure. It's got some pretty different coloring with this dark green along its back and sides, and some black on its legs and on its face. And once again, since it's from the Strike Attack series, it has a hidden attack. When you press down on its body, it has a chomping action. So let's place it next in size, next to the Tojangosaurus. And looking at it, it looks like the Tojangosaurus's plates are a little bit taller than the height of the Guaybasaurus right here, but they're really close either way, so I'm gonna put it side by side regardless. Next up is the Eoraptor dinosaur. Now this dinosaur actually came as part of a pack, and we'll see the second figure a little bit later on since it is a smaller figure. But this dinosaur's got some pretty cool coloring. It's got the dark green in the back, and then a super bright red along its arms and face. So we're gonna place that next in line, next to the Guaybasaurus, and you can already see the size difference between the two of these. The Guaybasaurus is maybe twice the size of the Eoraptor. Next up, we've got another quadrupedal dinosaur. This is an Avaceratops dinosaur figure. This one is from the Danger Pack series, which features mostly these smaller type of figures, and this species has the two horns on the front. It's also got the frill like a Triceratops, and some dark brown coloring with the lighter detailing on the top and the lighter frill and face. Now there is no attack feature on this dinosaur, so we're gonna go ahead and just put it next in line next to the Eoraptor. And once again, you can see that they are quite similar in terms of height, but obviously the Avaceratops is way larger in terms of body mass. But we'll put it next in line here since it is a little bit shorter than the Eoraptor. Next up is a quite large dinosaur, but it is very short and that's why it's next in line. This is the Gryposuchus dinosaur and it looks pretty similar to a crocodile or actually a sarcosuchus as well, which I have some figures of. And it's fairly adjustable. You can move all the legs back and forth and it has the spinning dial on its back for the chomping action and the sound effects. So we're gonna place the Gryposuchus next in line, and sure enough, it is actually a little bit shorter than the Avaceratops. But obviously, in terms of body size overall, the Gryposuchus is a little bit larger. Next up is our smallest figure yet. This is a Stegoros dinosaur. And this dinosaur was actually the second dinosaur that came in a pack with the Eoraptor back here. Now this is a quadrupedal dinosaur, and although the name sounds like a Stegosaurus, I don't think it looks a ton like one, but it does have the spikes on its tail. So let's place this next in line and look at the size difference between the two of them. The Gryposuchus is way larger in body mass, but in terms of height, there's actually not a major difference between the two. And now for our final dinosaur in this epic evolution collection is this Plesiosaurus figure. This is the only 
aquatic dinosaur in this collection, and it is from the Danger Pack. So you can move the jaw open and closed, you can move the neck, as well as all of the fins. And I do have some older versions of a Plesiosaurus figure, very similar to this, aside from the coloring. So let's go ahead and place this next in size, next to the Stegoros. And you can see that in terms of height, there's not a huge difference between these two dinosaurs. And although the Plesiosaurus is a lot more spread out, I don't know that there's actually a huge difference in body mass either. So let's get these back in line with the Plesiosaurus at the very end. And that is my entire epic evolution collection from biggest to smallest. And of course, with this gigantic dinosaur from the Legacy Collection. Now what dinosaurs do you think I should check out next? Let me know in the comments below. First up is the massive Dino Trackers Indominus Rex figure. This has a fully poseable body, and you can use the tail to control the head and chomp the jaw. Let's compare that to the Primal Attack Carnotaurus figure. This is one of my favorite dinosaurs. I love the coloring on it. And on this figure, you can use the tail to control the neck and chomp the head too. Next up, let's do the Dino Trackers T-Rex versus the Primal Attack Albertosaurus. First up is the T-Rex in the new tan coloring with the yellow and black striping. It's got this adjustable, pretty detailed headpiece on it. It has the poseable body with the legs, the arms, and the tail being movable, and a jaw chomping attack. And up against that is this slightly smaller Albertosaurus figure from Primal Attack. It has a cool jungle green color with the orange detailing. It's got a bunch of bumps and spikes along the top of its head and along its back too. And you can use the tail to move the head around and chomp the jaw. Next up is the Dino Trackers Stegosaurus versus the Primal Attack Stegosaurus. We'll first check out the Dino Tracker version. This one has a lot more intricate coloring and a lot more variety in the coloring too. And it has two action buttons. The first swings the tail up and down. And the second button here activates the tail to swing side to side. Let's compare that with the Primal Attack version. It's pretty much the exact same shape and size, but it has very different coloring with the gray-blue coloring and the pink underbelly. And this figure only has one attack button hidden on its spine right here. When you press that down, it swings its tail. Next up is the Dino Trackers Bistahivosaur versus another Primal Attack Carnotaurus. First off, the Bistahivosaur is a lot smaller, but I think I actually like the coloring on this figure better. It's got some gray and then the orange specks, the tan, and then more dark gray blue coloring along its face. And like many Dino Trackers figures, it has two attack buttons. The first activates the jaw, and the second button actually activates the spines on its back. And that's up against this Carnotaurus figure. I believe this is Carnotaurus Toro. It has a much darker coloring compared to the Carnotaurus that we saw earlier, but you can still use the tail to move the head around and chomp the jaw open and shut. Next up, we've got the Primal Attack Seats Mikorerum versus the Dino Trackers Nigersaurus. First off is Primal Attack, and this is a really cool looking carnivore figure. It has a really cool color design with this gray striping in the back, and then this blue kind of like lightning bolts coming down the sides. I especially love all the spikes that are along its back too. And you can use the tail to chomp the jaw open and shut. And up against that is this herbivore from Dino Trackers. This dinosaur stands on all four legs and has two tones of green the light green in the front and the dark green in the back. And it has a single action button for the attack. It can move its neck up and down and side to side. For the next one, it's the Primal Attack Sarcosuchus versus the Dino Trackers Regalaceratops. The Sarcosuchus is one intense looking dinosaur. It looks pretty close to a modern crocodile and it's got some bright orange and red, the dark purple along the top and then the light blue body. And of course, the tail can move the head around and chomp the jaw open and shut. And here is the Regalaceratops from Dino Trackers. It has a much brighter body with this yellow coloring with some purple and green. It's got a ton of super tall spikes on its back. And this figure has the single action button on its back for the attack and the sound effects. <laughs> Over here is a Baryonyx from Primal Attack versus this Irritator figure from the Dino Tracker series. This Baryonyx figure, I think it actually might be Baryonyx Grim. It's got some pretty cool coloring with the two tones of green, this yellow coloring, and then the tan body. And like many of the other Primal Attack figures, you can move the tail to move the head around and there's sound effects too. And up against that is this Irritator dinosaur, which in my opinion looks 
even more fierce. It's got tons of cool coloring, shorter legs than normal for these types of dinosaurs, a huge spine on its tail that goes all the way up its back, and the single action button for the chomping and sound effects. Here is the Dino Tracker's Orco Raptor versus the Primal Attack Carcharodontosaurus. First up, the Orco Raptor is a bit darker in color. It's got this dark green kind of jungle color and then the black along the back of its body. And it has a single action button for the sound effects and the chomping. <laughs> versus this Carcharodontosaurus figure in this bright tan coloring with the brown and orange striping from its back all the way up to its head. And it looks like this figure also has a single action button that activates the chomping. I don't think there's any sound effects on this one though. Here is the Dino Tracker's Sino Tyrannus figure versus the Primal Attack Sinoceratops. We'll first check out the Sino Tyrannus figure. It's got those two tones of green, very similar to some of the other Dino Tracker figures, but it also has this bright red detailing along its face. And this figure has two action buttons. The first activates the tail swinging back and forth, and the second activates the jaw chomping. But interestingly, this is another one of the figures that doesn't have any sound effects built in. And that's versus this Sinoceratops figure, a much more neutral color with this gray and then this light tan and yellow coloring on its body. But on this figure, you can actually move the tail around to move the head alongside with the sound effects. I've got another Sarcosuchus figure from Primal Attack here versus this Dino Tracker's Gigant Spinosaurus. From Primal Attack, this Sarcosuchus is very similar to the one that we saw earlier. Other than that, it has very different coloring with the jungle green coloring underneath and then the bright red on the top of its body. And this Gigant Spinosaurus is a whole lot smaller, but it looks kind of like a Stegosaurus with these spines on the top of its back. But of course, it has these huge spikes running out of its shoulders that are very different from a Stegosaurus. Next up is the Primal Attack Tarbosaurus versus the Dino Tracker's Endoraptor. The Tarbosaurus has a very dark gray coloring. You can see a bunch of darker gray striping along its body. I love these huge spikes running along its entire spine. And I love the bright red coloring on its neck and on its chin too. And on this figure, the tail can move the head back and forth and chomp the jaw, but no sound effects, sadly. And now this Endoraptor figure is super reflective. It's got a blue reflective coloring over its whole body. I'd say it's a decent amount larger than the Tarbosaurus and it has sound effects and attacks. You can activate them by moving the arms or by pressing this button on its back. This is the Dino Tracker's Dryptosaurus versus the Primal Attack Majingasaurus. I think the Dryptosaurus has a ton more spikes than the Majingasaurus. It's got some on its head, on its back, and a ton on its tail. Check that out. And it has an attack button on its back for the chomping and sound effects. <laughs> And the Majingasaurus is a little bit smaller, but it's got much brighter coloring with this green, yellow, and blue. And of course, you can move the tail around to get a really lifelike action, although it doesn't have an attack button to open and close the jaw. You have to do that manually. Over here, I've got the Primal Attack Kentrosaurus versus the Dino Tracker's Diabloceratops. Now the Kentrosaurus is pretty similar to a Stegosaurus. You can tell by these huge spines running down its back and that it stands on all four legs. But this figure has these spikes coming out of the sides of its stomach, no doubt for defense. And you'll notice that the spikes on its tail are a whole lot larger than a Stegosaurus's usually are. And it's actually got an action button on its back to swing those front spikes back in forth. And now it's time for the Diabloceratops, one of the coolest colored dinosaur figures from the Dino Tracker series. Check out this super bright red. That is super cool looking. And of course, it's got a massive frill on its head alongside these four huge horns. And there's an action button on its back for the attack and the sound effects. <laughs> Next is the Primal Attack Edmontosaurus versus the Dino Tracker's Eocarcharia. The Edmontosaurus, I believe, is an herbivore and it's standing on all four legs, but it has some pretty cool coloring with this bright blue and the yellow on its face. And you can move the tail to move the head around. And then the Eocarcharia is definitely a whole lot scarier looking. Check out all this feather texturing over its entire body. Plus it's pretty cool that they painted that red right around the eyes and on top of the head too. And check out this action button on its back for the chomping and sound effects. <laughs> 
And finally, it's the Dino Tracker's Pyroraptor figure versus the Primal Attack Ceratosaurus. Now this Pyroraptor from Dino Trackers is definitely the smaller of the two, but I think it has the coolest coloring with this super bright yellow and then the blue along the rest of its body. Plus it's got a bunch of feather texturing, although sadly it does not have any attack feature. And here's the Primal Attack Ceratosaurus, a whole lot larger in size, although the coloring isn't quite as impressive with the red in the front and then the tan with a little bit of black detailing. But the best part is that this figure does have an attack button that you can press for the chomping and sound effects. The first unusual species is this Eo Carcaria figure from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got a fantastic feathering texture over its whole body and a single lever action on its back for the chomping and roaring. Next up is the mighty Yang Chuanasaurus figure. This has the green and brown coloring, and you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw. Here is the Irritator Dinosaur, and I think it's from the Dino Tracker series. This figure has some really cool coloring, and that same action button on its back for the chomping and roaring. <laughs> Next up is this huge Quetzalcoatlus figure. If you're a big fan of the movies, you might remember this species in the Jurassic World Dominion movie. And it's got one button on its back for flapping its wings and another button for moving its neck up and down and opening and closing its jaws. Right over here, I've got the Siamosaurus figure. This dinosaur walks on all four legs and you can use the tail to move the head around and open and close the jaw. Next is a little bit of an older figure. This is a Concavenator figure. It's got this huge hump on its back that's red and purple and its entire face is purple and there's an action button on its back for a chomping action and you can press on its spike to swing its tail back and forth this aquatic dinosaur is called the elasmosaurus it's got a soft blue body which i bet camouflages really well in the water and it has two action buttons on its back one swings its neck side to side and the other moves its neck up and down here is the Proceratosaurus figure. This is the basic edition, so you can move its tail, its legs, and its arm, but sadly there is no action button. Still has some pretty cool coloring though. Next up is the Sucomimus figure. This version is in the yellow and brown, and it has two buttons on its back, one for chomping its jaw, and the other for swinging its tail. And I've actually got the other Sucomimus figure in here. This one is in the blue and yellow coloring. And this figure actually only has one action button, and that is for the chomping action. Check out this crazy looking figure. This is a Diabloceratops from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got the all red body, some gigantic horns on its head. It's got some sound effects and the lever on its back for the action. Here's a slightly smaller dinosaur, but still pretty scary looking. This is the Majingasaurus dinosaur with the green, yellow, and blue coloring. And while you have to open and close its mouth manually on this figure, you can still use the tail to control the neck and the head. This next figure is from the new Dino Tracker series. This is the Orca Raptor figure. It has some feather texturing on part of its body. It also has these massive claws on its front arms. And just like all the other Dino Tracker figures, has this lever on its back for the roaring and the chomping action. Next up, I've got an Albertosaurus figure in the green and orange coloring. And with this figure, you can move the tail around to twist the neck back and forth and to chomp the jaw. This next uncommon species is a crazy looking carnivore figure. This is a Tarbosaurus. Check out that red underneath its chin and all these huge spikes running down its back. Plus, you can use the tail to twist the neck around and open and close the jaw. This next figure is also quite large. This species is called a Siats Micorerum. It has the orange coloring on the sides and underbelly and the dark blue on top with all these rows of spikes on its head and on its back. And of course, its special feature is that you can use the tail to twist the neck around and open and close its jaw. Check out those really cool teeth. Next up is an herbivore figure. This is a Cynoceratops figure. And this version comes in the soft green coloring with some tan detailing and dark orange. And with this Cynoceratops figure, you can use the tail to move its head around in all sorts of directions. Check it out, it's another herbivore figure. This uncommon species is called an Oranosaurus. It has a huge spine running along the top of its back and some really cool coloring. It's got the green on its body, bright yellow, orange, and even some blue on its face. And it has this action button on its side for moving its head and sound effects. 
Right over here, I've got the Ampelosaurus figure. Now this one is a bit older of a figure, but it's still pretty uncommon of a species. And it has two action buttons on its back. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button activates its tail for swinging back and forth. All right, here's another carnivore. This is a Cryolophosaurus figure, and this version is the yellow one with the brown coloring and the huge crown on the top of its head. And with this figure, although you have to open and close its mouth manually, you can still use the tail to move its neck around. This next four-legged dinosaur is called a Nigersaurus. It's got the two tones of green on its body. And since it's from the Dino Tracker series, it has this special feature button on its back used for moving its head in all sorts of directions. This next uncommon species is called a Dryptosaurus figure, also from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got more dark coloring over most of its body and it's got spikes all over on its head, on its back, and a bunch on its tail as well. And it's got the action button on its back for chomping and sound effects. This next figure is called the Gigantspinosaurus dinosaur. It looks kind of like a stegosaurus because it has those frills on its back, but it also has these huge spines coming out of its shoulder too. And it is actually spring-loaded so that when you move the head back and forth, it actually swings the tail back and forth too. Next up, I've got the Piatsnitskisaurus. It's got some pretty cool blue coloring over its whole body and also some red, some orange, and some light green. Next up is the Nothosaurus dinosaur. It's a pretty weird looking species it's got some short legs and a really long neck and narrow snout. Here is the Shringosaurus dinosaur in the yellow and brown coloring. It walks on all four legs and it has this massive pair of horns on the top of its head. Next up is the Austroraptor dinosaur figure. It comes in the tan and brown coloring and has a bit of dark orange along the top of its head and it has a really long and narrow snout. Next up is a Herrerasaurus, which you might have heard before, but this is actually a pretty new figure and looks quite a bit different compared to the old version. Plus, it has an action button on its back for a chomping motion. This is the Geniodecti Cirrus figure. This version comes in the dark brown and yellow coloring, and it also has an action button on its back for opening and closing its jaw. Here is another aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Tanistrophius figure. It's got some short little legs that you can adjust and a bright blue body. And when you move the tail up and down, it actually swings its neck way down to the bottom. Now here's a crazy looking dinosaur. This uncommon species is called a Scutosaurus. It's got a bright orange body and it walks on all fours and check out these huge horns underneath its chin. I've got a few more winged dinosaurs in here. This species is called Ramphorhynchus. It's got some bright yellow green wings and a bunch of crazy looking teeth in its mouth. This next dinosaur species is called the Zungdaripteris. It's got bright yellow wings and a brown body and you can actually see feather texture all over its wings too. Plus, it's got a pretty unique looking face and jaw. Next up is a Draco Rex figure. This one is colored bright green with some gray striping and check out all those horns on the back of its head. Oh, you know what? I've got another winged dinosaur in here. This one is called the Tapehara. It's got a lot of orange and some green on its body, but the coolest part is this face. Check that out. Plus, there's a button on its back to flap its wings. The next dinosaur is an Elaphrosaurus figure. It comes in the blue coloring with some yellow and dark brown detailing. And check out those huge horns on the top of its head. Here is the extreme battle damage Quilmosaurus figure. It has the light green body with the dark green on top and the bright red chin. And check out that battle damage on the side that you can click on and off. All right, I've got another aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Plesiosaurus. It's got a dark green body with the white underneath, also to camouflage in the ocean, and a single action button on its back to move its fins. This next uncommon figure is the Masiakasaurus dinosaur. It has the dark red body with the yellow spotting all over, and spotting is pretty unusual for these dinosaur figures, and the single action button on its back for chomping its jaw. This is the Rugops Primus figure. It has some feather texturing over its body and a soft green coloring on its body with the black on its tail and on its face. Here is the Miragaya figure. This figure looks quite a bit like a Stegosaurus, but this one also has the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders and a lot more spikes on its tail too. And here is a Pachycephalosaurus figure. I believe this one is from the Legacy Collection. And this figure has a special feature that when you press down on its tail, it has the headbutting action. 
This little dinosaur here is called a Trudon. It has the pink underbelly and gray on the sides and the black spine and the black along the top of its head too. Next up is the Protoceratops figure. There's a few versions of this and this one is in the bright green with yellow accenting. This figure I believe is called the Sauropelta. It has some huge spikes coming out of its shoulders and is actually spring loaded so you can swing its shoulders back and forth with those huge spikes. Here's a crazy looking figure. This is actually a hybrid dinosaur from the first Jurassic World movie. This is a Triceratops and Stegosaurus hybrid. Check out that battle damage right on the side too. And it even has an action button. When you press down its tail, you get a stabbing action with its head. And last of all, I've got the Zunoceratops figure. This is a newer version that is in the brown coloring with the tan and black on its face. And it has a single action button for a stabbing action. First up, we've got the extreme chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It's a medium-sized T-Rex figure, and of course it has the button on the top of its head for chomping. Next up is the Primal Attack, Control, and Conquer Carnotaurus figure. It's got a bright orange-red body, and it has a chomping action as well as a head-moving action. Here is the epic Roarin' Tyrannosaurus Rex figure, and it's one of my favorites. It's quite a lot larger than the T-Rex that we just saw. It's got a light brown body with the dark brown on top, and you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw. This next ginormous figure is the Destroy and Devour Indominus Rex. This figure's even bigger than the T-Rex figures that we've seen, and it has two actions. First, it has an arm attack, and it has a roaring jaw action. And now let's grab this huge aquatic dinosaur. This is the real feel Mosasaurus figure. This dinosaur was one of the stars of the first Jurassic World movie, and you can open and close its jaw, move its fins, and as you can tell from the name, it has a much more lifelike feel than many of the other figures. It's a bit softer. Up next is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. Now this T-Rex may look similar to the previous ones, but it has a totally different attack. It has a Terran attack with its mouth. See how its neck twists all the way to the side? And it also has a secondary button for swinging the tail back and forth too. This figure is really wild. This is the Primal Attack Massive Biters Tarbosaurus. Got a ton of crazy spines running all the way up from its head to its tail. It has some pretty cool coloring. I like how it's subtle along its body and then bright red along its neck. And it has a jaw chomping action too. This figure is another Primal Attack Massive Biters figure. This is the Seats Mico Rerum. And it's got some pretty crazy coloring and details. Check out all those little spikes right on the top of its head and on its back. And of course it has some super bright orange and blue coloring too. And best of all, it has a jaw chomping action as well. Up next is the Primal Attack Control and Conquer Carnotaurus Toro figure. It has a dark brown body, a lot darker than the Carnotaurus that we saw earlier. And it has the jaw chomping action and the head moving action too. <laughs> This is another massive biters from the Primal Attack series. This is the Albertosaurus figure. This figure is pretty recognizable because of the green all over the body with the orange stripe on both sides. And of course, it has the jaw chomping action and the head moving action too. <laughs> also from the massive biters toy line is this Sarcosuchus figure. This figure is really long. It's probably around a foot in length. It's got all sorts of texturing and detailing. You can see two rows of spikes right on its back that go all the way down its tail. And of course it has a long and narrow snout, very similar to an alligator's, and it has the jaw chomping action too. Aww. Here is the Primal Attack Soundstrike Majungasaurus. And as you can hear, it comes with sound effects, although it seems to be a little bit broken at the moment. This is a bit smaller of a figure, but it still has some really cool coloring and tons of little spikes and details all over its body. And while there's no button to open and close the jaw on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around. 
Up next is the Primal Attack Sound Strike Irritator. This figure has a similar body shape to a Baryonyx, although it does have a little spine that runs down its back. And on this figure, there's no button to open and close the mouth, but you can use the tail to move the head around. And check out those sound effects too. Here's another Primal Attack Soundstrike figure. This is the Sinoceratops. And this figure comes in the light gray with some tan detailing. The coolest coloring and detailing is this bright orange and yellow along its face and the super black eyes. And this figure has a head attack action. Check that out, and sound effects too. Next up for Primal Attack is this Soundstrike Parasaurolophus figure. It is bright yellow, it has some reflective pink along its back and its legs, and the best part is that it has a head attack action. Also from the Soundstrike series is this Pteranodon figure. This version is in the dark orange and maroon coloring along its wings, and it has two action buttons, one to operate the mouth, with sound effects, and the other button to operate the wings. Here is the Primal Attack Soundstrike Cryolophosaurus figure. There are other versions of this dinosaur, but this one is in the bright yellow, brown, and orange coloring. And there is no button to open and close the mouth, but you can use the tail for a head attack action. Here's another Pteranodon figure from Primal Attack. This one has some even cooler coloring, I think. While it's mostly brown, it has some really cool green striping along its wings and a darker green coloring along its face. And just like the other Pteranodon figure, there's one button to operate the mouth and another button to flap the wings. Here is the Primal Attack Edmontosaurus figure. This figure stands on all four legs. It's got some light tan and dark green blue coloring with the brightest coloring along its face. And like many other figures, this comes with a head attack feature. Now here is a Savage Strike figure. This is the Styracosaurus. It's a pretty small figure. This version comes with the light green and brown with the bright orange and yellow detailing along the face. And this figure has a head thrash attack that you activate by pressing on the tail. Up next is the Patchy Cephalosaurus figure from Savage Strike. It's colored bright green on the underbelly and orange along the rest of the body. And it has a head ramming action that you activate by pressing on the tail. Up next is a Velociraptor figure from the Attack Pack series. It's dark blue with some red detailing along the top and it has a fully poseable body. From the Savage Strike series is this Velociraptor Charlie figure. It's bright green and has some darker green along the top. And the coolest part of all is that this figure has a claw slashing action by pressing this button on the top. Check it out, here's another Velociraptor figure from the Savage Strike series. This is Velociraptor Delta. This Velociraptor is colored a much more dark blue-green color, but just like the other figure, it has a button on its back for the claw slashing action. Over here, I've got two different Stiggy Malak figures. This one is from Jurassic World, and this one is from Camp Cretaceous, both from the Savage Strike toy line. They've got quite a bit of different coloring along their whole body, but they both still have that super hard shelled head for headbutting with the spikes right along the back. And both these figures have a head ramming action when you press down on the tail. Next up from Camp Cretaceous Savage Strike is this Plesiosaurus figure. It is way smaller than the Mosasaurus figure that we saw earlier. It's got a much longer neck and a mouth that you can open manually, and there is a button on its back to move the flippers up and down. Here is a wild looking winged dinosaur. This is the Tapihara from the Savage Strike series. It's got some crazy cool coloring and texture detailing along its wings and a super bright head and frill right on the top of its head. Plus there's a tiny little button on its back to flip the wings up and down. I've got two other winged dinosaurs. These two are from the attack pack. And I believe they are called the Rampharancus dinosaur. One of them's a bright green color with some darker green on the body. And the other figure has some white, dark blue, and orange. And both of them have a super long and narrow snout with tons of huge teeth inside. 
This is the Sora Pelta figure from the Savage Strike series. It's got a fully armored body all over, and it's got tons of spikes along its shoulders, and it has a spring-loaded spike attack action. Next up is a Dilophosaurus figure from the Savage Strike series. This figure features the giant frill right beside its head and an attack button when you press down on the tail. Here is the Minmi figure from the Attack Pack series. Like the Soropelta, it has a fully armored body and it's got spikes all over its back instead of the large ones on its shoulders. This next figure is from the Attack Pack series too. This is the Trudon. It's got a pretty small body. It has an interesting spine running along its back and on the top of its head too. Here is a Dimorphodon figure from the Attack Pack series. It has bright orange and red on the underside of its wings while the rest of its body is a dark green color and you can manually open and close the mouth too. Next from the Attack Pack is this Herrerasaurus figure. It's got some pretty bright coloring with the soft green and darker green and light blue coloring right along the top and this figure is fully posable too. <laughs> Also part of the Attack Pack series is this bright green Draco Rex. There's some gray striping along its back and on its legs, and it's got tons of spikes along the back of its head. This is the Calavasaurus figure from the Attack Pack series. It stands on all four legs and has three different colors. It's got bright orange on the top, some light blue along the tail, and the rest of its body is a dark blue color, except or its mouth, which is bright blue again. And finally, from the Attack Pack series is this tiny little Ornithosceles figure. Most of its body is a dark brown color. It has some yellow detailing along the top with the gray underbelly. This dinosaur really looks like it could run fast. <laughs> This gigantic figure is called the Ruthless Rampage Allosaurus. This Allosaurus looks quite a bit different compared to the older Allosaurus figures that Jurassic World made. Still has some pretty similar coloring with the brown and the blue, but it's got some awesome new features. First off is its evolution feature that springs up these spikes on its back. That's pretty cool, so it like sticks up when it's in battle mode. Plus this figure has a dial on its back that actually controls the head. That's pretty interesting. I haven't seen another Jurassic World figure from older series that have this really cool attack feature. And I really love the new teeth that they're coming out with. These look a whole lot scarier. Next up is this crazy looking dinosaur from the Epic Evolution Wild Roar series. It's called the Ecrixinatosaurus. And as you can see on this little icon on the package that this dinosaur's environment looks to be like the mountains, maybe some snowy areas too. Very cool. So this is a medium-sized figure. It kind of reminds me of a Scorpio Venator dinosaur figure. It's got some pretty cool camouflage type coloring. It's like this stone gray coloring with some lighter stripes along its back. It's got a ton of horns on its head, including two horns above its eyes. That's kind of like a Carnotaurus figure. And now let's pull the tab out and let's see what kind of sound effects and attack features it has. Just like the last figure, I can see there's a dial on its back that'll control the attack features. So let's see what it does. That's pretty cool. So you can keep spinning the dial and it'll keep going through the different roar sound effects and the different attacks too. That is very cool. And once again, I love the new teeth on here. It's not a hard plastic. You can see that it's actually pretty bendable. And of course on this figure, you can move the tiny front arms and the legs and you can twist the tail too. Next up from the Epic Evolution Collection is the Poposaurus figure. And the environment of this dinosaur looks to be more like a river or stream area. You can see some mountains in the background. Now this is a much smaller figure compared to the two ones that we just saw. It's got some pretty cool coloring. It's like a gray blue over most of its body. It's got some orange brown on its tail, the lighter underbelly, and then that same orange brown right along its face. And it looks like this figure doesn't have any attack features or evolution features, but you can pose the neck, the jaw, 
the arms, the legs, and you can twist the tail too. Next up from Epic Evolution is the Danger Pack Avaceratops. Or it might be pronounced Avaceratops, I'm not quite sure. But let's look at that environment up here. This one looks like it's up in the mountains as well, possibly some snow. This figure has some pretty realistic coloring too. It has a stone gray coloring, it's almost like a brown color. Has some lighter detailing along the top and then the light face. It looks pretty similar to a Triceratops, but you'll notice that it only has two horns on the front of its head instead of three. And there is no attack feature or sound effects for this figure, which is a bummer, but you can move the head up and down manually, as well as move all the legs, and you can twist the tail too. Here is the Epic Evolution Danger Pack Plesiosaurus. Now I have a few other Plesiosauruses in my collection, so it'd be really cool to check this one out and add it. And looking at the environment icon, it looks like this one is part of a stream or water area, which makes sense because this is an aquatic dinosaur. Now this is a smaller figure and it has different coloring compared to the other Plesiosaurus figures that I have. It's got a dark color along the top of its body, probably so that it can camouflage along the bottom of the river or the ocean, and its underbelly is a lighter color. And it looks like the only big color on this figure is on its face, where it's got this dark red coloring. Overall, this is pretty cool. There is no attack feature on it, which once again is kind of a bummer, but you can adjust the jaw manually. You can adjust the neck, the fins, and I think you can move the tail too. Here's another one from the Epic Evolution Collection, and this one is actually a set of two dinosaurs. This one is called the Eoraptor, and this one is called the Stegoros. And once again, looking at that icon, it looks like these dinosaurs are from a jungle area. Let's first check out the Eoraptor. Now this raptor is a lot smaller than many of my other older raptor figures, but it's got some pretty cool coloring with this green along its back and on its legs, and then this bright red along its arms, its neck, and its head. And not only that, but different compared to other raptors, it's got these spikes running along the back of its head. And because this figure is quite small, there's no attack features or sound effects, but you can open the jaw, you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail too. And here is the Stegoros figure. And this is pretty interesting. It's got a huge tail, which is kind of like an Ankylosaurus. And it looks like it has quite a bit of armor along its back. You can see these spikes running from its head all the way to its tail. And it looks like it walks on all four legs. And it's got this dark green coloring but it's got this bright green striping running from its back to its head. And on this figure, you can't open and close the jaw, but you can only move the legs and the tail. This next figure is actually from the Dino Tracker series, and I believe it's pronounced the Zuanhanosaurus. And by this icon on the packaging, it looks like this dino's environment is the mountains. This figure looks pretty similar to a raptor in some ways. It's a smaller figure, it stands on its back legs. And I like the coloring too. It's got this stone gray coloring and then the feathering. You can see all that feather texturing. That's a pretty cool brown color and it's on its arms as well. And that goes all the way up to its head where it's got that gray again and then this dark reflective black coloring. And it looks like on this figure there is no attack feature, but you can still manually open and close the jaw move the neck around, move the arms, the legs, and the tail too. And here I've got the new Dino Trackers Pyroraptor figure from the Danger Pack series. And according to the icon up here, it looks like this dinosaur is in the jungle environment. And the coloring on this figure is really cool. I have quite a few other Pyroraptors from older series, but I have none that have this dark blue coloring and then this super bright yellow on the legs and on the underbelly. And what's interesting is that its face is still a dark black color with that white accenting. You can see it's got some feathering on its arms, on its back here, and of course on the top of its head. I think it's a bummer that they didn't color those feathers differently though. And just like the other figures, you can open and close the jaw manually, move the head, the arms, the legs, and the tail. Now let's check out the rest of the figures in this bin. I'm sure you've noticed this one already. This is the new super colossal Endoraptor figure. It's got the classic black over its whole body with the gold stripe running down the side. And this super colossal figure has some of my favorite teeth 
out of any of these super colossal dinosaurs. In the back here, I've got the Dino Trackers Indominus Rex figure. This comes in the classic gray coloring over its entire body, and you can use the tail to control the head back and forth and a button on its tail to operate the jaw. And it's got a glowing green light in its neck. It's kind of hard to see here. This is the Dino Trackers Tyrannosaurus Rex figure in a really cool light tan coloring with the yellow and the black striping along the top. It comes with this cool little headpiece. You can even see its eye through it. And it has a really cool attack feature when you press the button on its back. Check out that jaw snapping action. Here's the new Jurassic Park 93 Real Field Tyrannosaurus Rex. It looks very similar to the classic T-Rex figure that they made a super long time ago. I really love this dark red coloring with the spots and the lighter underbelly. And this T-Rex can actually be fed smaller dinosaurs. For example, why don't we feed it this little dinosaur here? And then you can retrieve the dinosaur in its stomach compartment right in here. There we go, just like that. Next up is the Dino Trackers Bista Heversorf. And this dinosaur looks quite crazy. Check out these huge spines on its back. And you can actually move these spikes by pressing this button right up here. Check that out. In addition to that, it's got another button over here that activates the attack feature. Next up is an aquatic dinosaur called the Elasmosaurus. It looks kind of like the Plesiosaurus figure that we saw earlier, because it's got the four fins, the long body, the super long neck, and then the small head. And this figure has two buttons on its back. Each of them control the neck. One goes side to side, and the other goes up and down. This is the Sino Tyrannus figure from the Dino Tracker series. I love the coloring on this with the dark green, the light green, and then the bright red. And this figure has two action buttons. The first activates the jaw chomping action, and the second button activates the tail swinging action. This is the gigantic Trackers Stegosaurus figure. It's got some really cool intricate coloring over its body. It's got the huge Dino Tracker backpack, and it has two buttons on its back. The first button is hidden right here, and that swings the tail up and down, so you can get some stabbing action with those huge spikes. And the other button on the other side here activates the tail to swing side to side. This crazy looking figure is called the Diabloceratops. It comes in the really cool dark red and the brown underbelly, which is pretty unusual. It's got these four massive horns on the front of its face and actually some smaller horns running out behind its face. And it's got an attack feature right here that when you press that, it swings its head side to side. Here is the Mighty Irritator figure with some really crazy coloring with the dark brown in the back, the light brown in the middle of its body, and some bright green along its back, its neck, and its head. And this figure has an action feature on its back as well to activate the jaw chopping action. Next up is the Eo Carcaria figure. This dino figure has quite a bit brighter coloring compared to many of the other ones with this bright green blue in the back and then the dark blue on its front with the bright red on its head. And it's got that same action button on its back to activate the jaw chopping action. This next figure is from the Raptor family. It is called the Orco Raptor. It's got the black with the white striping along its tail and the dark green along its body and on the top of its head. It's got some pretty massive front arms too and this action button on its back for the jaw chomping. Next up is the Regala Ceratops figure. It has this amazing bright yellow coloring with some purple detailing, some green along its back, and that same green along its face too. It's got the three horns on its head, similar to a Triceratops, but it also has this really cool looking frill that's quite a bit different compared to a Triceratops frill. And of course it has an action button on its back for some roaring sound effects. Next up is the Dryptosaurus figure. This one has some pretty dark coloring. It's a very dark brown along most of its body, complemented by this gray-green coloring running along its arms to its tail. And check out how many spikes this figure has all over its tail, all over its back, and especially along the top of its head. Plus, there is an action button on its back for that jaw-chomping action. Next up, I've got the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. It has the classic brown coloring with some cool texturing and detailing over its body. It's got the three horns on its face, similar to the Regaliceratops. But as I pointed out, you'll see that the frill is 
quite a bit different. This smaller dinosaur is called the Scatosaurus, and this one is super bright. Check out that orange coloring with the black spots on its back. Its two front legs are white, which is an interesting detail, and it's got tons of horns coming out the bottom side of its face. Most dinosaurs have horns on the top of their head, but not this one. And here is an Atrociraptor figure with the dark green coloring along its back and then the bright green yellow coloring along its front. Plus what's really cool is that although this figure is really small, it does have an attack feature. So check that out. You can have a chomping action with this one. This first figure, however, is not from Dino Trackers. This is actually part of the 30th anniversary Jurassic Park collection. This is the real feel T-Rex figure designed to look like the old Jurassic Park one. The skin on its body is soft and rubbery, and it actually can eat smaller dinosaurs and store them in its stomach compartment. Next up is the Dino Trackers Endoraptor figure. This version is slightly larger than many of my other Endoraptor figures, and it has some roaring actions with its arms. And it has an action button on its back too. Here is the Epic Attack Carnotaurus figure. It's around the same size as many of my other Carnotaurus figures, and it features the red body with the brown top and a single action button on its back to operate its jaw. But best of all, there's these action buttons on its side for more sound effects and lights too. Here is the Dino Trackers Diabloceratops figure. It comes in a bright red coloring over all its body and has some massive horns and it has an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. Next up is the Dino Trackers Sino Tyrannus figure. It comes with this cool headset that you can take off of the dinosaur figure, and it has some pretty cool coloring, and it has two buttons. One activates its head, and the other button activates its tail. Right over here is the Dino Trackers Eo Carcaria. This dinosaur has feather texturing over all its body. It's got some pretty bright coloring and the bright red along its face and an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. This is the Gigantic Trackers Stegosaurus figure. It has some really cool coloring over all of its body. It's quite different from all the other Stegosaurus figures that I have. And of course it comes with the tracker backpack and two action buttons on its back. One swings its tail up and down and the other swings it side to side. Here is the Dino Trackers Nigersaurus figure. This dinosaur stands on all four legs and has some pretty bright green on the front and darker green in the back. And there's one single action button on its back to move its head back and forth. Here's our first aquatic dinosaur of the collection. This is the Chronosaurus. It has the dark blue top and the yellow underbelly, and you can adjust all its fins and its tail too. And it has a single action on its back to operate its jaw. Next up is the Edaphosaurus figure. It looks pretty similar to a Dimetrodon with a huge spine on its back and standing on all four legs, but its spine is even a bit larger than a Dimetrodon's. And with this figure, you can use the tail to move the head back and forth. All right, now it's time for some ones that I haven't even opened up yet. This is the Orcoraptor figure. This is a pretty bulky looking figure. You can see that it has some feather texturing along the underside of its body, but not really along the top. You can tell that it's kind of a skin texture. And kind of like the Therizinosaurus, it has these huge claws on its hands. It's got some pretty bright accenting design on its tail, but not really anywhere else, which is interesting. But there is some right around its eyes too. And it looks like the arms, the legs, and the tail are adjustable. And there's an action button on its back to operate its jaw. 
Next up of the unopened figures is this Irritator figure. I think I have one or two other Irritator figures, so I'm excited to add this to my collection. All right, here it is. And I gotta say, it looks even a bit different compared to my other Irritator figures. Its legs seem to be a lot shorter, whereas its body is super long. It has this really long tail. And of course, it still has the spine that runs from its back down its tail. And it has some pretty cool coloring too, with the dark brown in the back and on its legs, the orange in the middle, and then some bright green along its head and its neck too. And it looks like its arms and its legs and its tail are adjustable. And there's that single action button on its back to operate its jaw. And the next unopened figure is this Regalus Ceratops. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So obviously it looks quite a bit like a Triceratops. It stands on all four legs. It's got the horns on the front, as well as these additional horns along the top of its frill. And it's even got some spikes running down its back and its tail too. This is a pretty bright dinosaur as well. Most of it is that yellow color. It has some green along its face and along its back. And it looks like all four legs are adjustable. You can twist the tail around a bit. And it has an action button on its back for roar sound effects. Up next is the Dino Tracker's Dryptosaurus figure. It has fairly dark coloring with the dark brown over most of its body and then the green accenting on its arms and on its tail as well. And boy, does this figure have tons of spikes along its body. And there's the action button to control the jaw and the sound effects. <laughs> Over here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. It features a fully poseable body on all of its limbs and has the classic blue coloring with the white stripe and the gray underbelly. Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Concavenator. It too has a fully poseable body with all of its limbs and it features some pretty cool coloring with some bright orange along parts of it, the dark blue, the lighter underbelly, and some cool detailing around its eyes. Here is the Dino Tracker's Zunoceratops figure. This version of the Zunoceratops has the brown body with some tan and black along its neck and an action button to activate its head. This next Dino Tracker's figure, I believe is called the Elephrosaurus. It features a bright blue body with some yellow accenting along the side and a darker face with some horns on the top. And it looks like its whole body is adjustable as well. The arms, the legs, the tail, the neck, and the jaw. Here is the Dino Tracker's Herrerasaurus figure. And this Herrerasaurus looks quite a bit different compared to the older versions by Jurassic World. It features posable arms, legs, and tail and an action button on its back for the chomping. This next figure is the Dino Tracker's Ostroraptor. This version features the tan body with some brown detailing and some brighter coloring around its head. And overall, it's shaped like a Velociraptor, but the biggest difference is the shape of its head and its jaw. Here is the Dino Tracker's Strike Attack Gigant Spinosaurus. This figure looks kind of like a Miragaya with the spines along its back and the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders, but it has a different shaped head and this one has the orange coloring in the front and the tan in the back. Plus it has an action that when you move its head back and forth, it moves its tail too. Next up is the Dino Tracker Strike Attack Dilophosaurus figure. This figure has very muted colors. It only has white, some black as well, and I think that's pretty much it. But it still has this really cool feature that when you move its tail, it activates its frills. <laughs> Now here is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus figure. It looks quite a bit different compared to the Strike Attack figure that we just saw. But this figure is actually pretty cool because you can actually remove the frill to reveal just the head by itself. Which apparently is a more realistic look for the Dilophosaurus in real life. Back here is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. It features the fully posable body, has some pretty cool coloring, over its whole body, and of course has the little horn on the top of its head. 
here is the Dino Tracker's baby Brachiosaurus figure. I have a few other versions of this figure, and this one is in the brown coloring with the tan accenting along its back. <laughs> Here is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure, a little bit larger than many of my other Dilophosauruses. And interestingly, on this figure, you can't move the frills at all, but there is this action button on its side to activate some sounds and some light effects. <laughs> Looks like here's another Zunoceratops figure from Dino Trackers. We've seen this one already. This one from Dino Trackers, I believe, is called Geniodectes Cirrus. Features some bright coloring with the yellow that runs from its tail through its underbelly up to its face, and then the brown along the rest of its body. And it has an action button on its back to operate the jaw. Next up is a miniature Hammond Collection Velociraptor figure. It, of course, is extremely poseable all over its body. It has a single stripe that runs down its entire side, and it's got some cool blue coloring right around its eyes, too. And finally, here is the Dino Tracker's Strike Attack Atrociraptor figure. This Atrociraptor has some bright yellow along the front, and then the back is a dark green color. It's also got some reflective silver coloring right around its eyes, and a single action button on its back to operate its head. First, we're gonna go with one of the massive ocean dinosaurs. This is the Ocean Protector Mosasaurus. This is the new version of the Mosasaurus compared to the older one back here that we'll see shortly. It's got a darker blue coloring on the skin with a light underbelly, and you can move the jaw and the fins and the tail. Next, we're gonna grab a land dinosaur. This is the new epic evolution Allosaurus figure. It has the classic coloring like many of the Allosauruses with the brown on the sides and the underbelly and then the dark blue on the top. It's got this hidden button on its tail here to activate its spikes that come out of its back. And there's a little dial on its back for the chomping action. Those are some really cool teeth too. Next, we're gonna grab a sky dinosaur. This is a pteranodon dinosaur. And this, I believe, is a basic figure, so the coloring and texturing is a bit more simple than the other figures. But you can still move its wings and adjust its head and open and close its mouth. Now it's time for another ocean dinosaur. Here is the older version of the Mosasaurus. As you can see, it has lighter coloring compared to the newer version. Plus, it has some interesting coloring right along its back right there, a bit of the lighter blue. And like the other Mosasaurus figure, you can open and close its jaw, you can move its fins, but on this older figure, you actually can't move the tail at all. But other than that, they're pretty identical other than the coloring too. Now it's time for another land dinosaur. This is a pretty special figure and I think pretty hard to find in our days. This is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus Dinosaur figure. It's one of the few Spinosaurus figures that comes in this dark green coloring with the white and red striping on its spine. And you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. You can adjust the neck as well. And of course there is a chomping action. Now it's time for another sky dinosaur. This is actually a species that I'm not familiar with. It's an older Jurassic World figure. I believe it's from the first Jurassic World movie. And it looks pretty unique, especially with this crazy red and blue coloring along with the yellow on its face. And on this figure, you can squeeze the legs to flap the wings up and down. Plus there is a battle damage button right on its back that you can press as well. Next up from the ocean dinosaurs is this dinosaur with a super long neck. This is the Elasmosaurus. It's got those aquatic colors with that light blue coloring and some lighter along its back and on its tail. You can adjust the fins on this ocean dinosaur. Plus, there are two buttons on its back. One makes its head swing to the side and open its mouth, and the other button moves its head downwards and opens its mouth too. I've got another huge land dinosaur here. This is the super popular Indominus Rex, and actually this figure is from the Dino Trackers series. So it's a bit smaller compared to many of the other Indominus Rexes that I have, but you can use the tail to move its head around and open and close its jaw. 
Let's go for another land dinosaur. Here I've got a Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. And this one is the battle damage edition that you can see right on the side here. And you can activate and hide the battle damage by pressing this button on the top right here. Just like that, it almost completely disappears. And you can move the arms, the legs, the tail, and you can adjust the neck as well, although there is no button for chomping the jaw. Next up is a sky dinosaur, and this species is called the Quetzalcoatlus. You may remember this dinosaur from the Jurassic World Dominion movie when it attacked the plane as they were flying to the island. And it has foldable wings, so you can expand the wings fully. It has a button on its back for flapping the wings, and another button on its back for activating the chomping action. Let's do a few more sky dinosaurs here. I've got two more pteranodons, each with unique coloring. This first one has the orange wings with the brown body and the yellow detailing right along its head. And it also has that button for flapping its wings and for chomping its jaw. And the other pteranodon here also has some orangish yellow wings, but it has some detailing. It looks like kind of green tan coloring along the bottom of its wings. And its whole body is not that brown color, but it rather fades from this orange up to the brown and then that dark red detailing along its head. I definitely like the coloring design of this one more, but sadly it only has one button and that button is for flapping the wings. Next up is a smaller aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Tanistrophius. Just like the Elasmosaurus that we saw earlier though, it has a super long neck and it also has that aquatic coloring with the darker blue on its body and then the lighter blue up to its face. And you can move all the legs on this figure, plus you can move the tail up and down to swing its head up and down as well. Next up for the land dinosaurs is the Endoraptor. This specific Endoraptor figure is from the Dino Tracker series, so it's one of the newer ones, and it's really cool because it has this reflective blue coloring over its entire body while still having the iconic gold stripe down its side. And you can adjust the legs, the tail, and actually the arms activate a chomping action on this figure. Plus there is an additional button on its back for more chomping and sound effects. Next up is a sky dinosaur. This one is a Dimorphodon, and I believe it's from the Amber Collection because it's quite a bit more detailed with its coloring and with its posability. A really cool part is that its wings are actually not outstretched, but it's actually in this walking position with its wings upright. And you can adjust the jaw, the neck, you can move the arms around as well as the back legs and the tail too. Here is another sky dinosaur, and this one is called the Zungaripteris. It is quite a unique looking sky dinosaur. It's got the bright yellow body with the brown that goes up to its head, and it actually looks like it has feather texturing all over its body, which you don't see on the pteranodons, I think. Plus, check out the shape of its head as well. It kind of curves upward, and it has this huge ridge on the top of its head. Next up is an aquatic dinosaur. This is another Mosasaurus figure, but it's a whole lot smaller than the ones I showed you earlier. And this figure is actually a little bit older than the other ones. It's from the first Jurassic World movie, and it's got some battle damage on the side here that you can open and close. And you can move the fins, and the tail used to activate a chomping action in this figure. Sadly, it's broken. Broken, so it no longer does that. Back to the land dinosaurs, I've got a Baryonyx figure here with the classic brown coloring on the sides and underbelly and then the darker blue detailing along the top of its body. Plus, as a special little feature on this, it's got the reflective blue coloring on the top of its face and a little bit on the side too. And there's a single action button on its back for a chomping action. Let's check out these two sky dinosaurs next. I believe they're both pteranodon figures, but they look quite a bit different. And this one is the older version, so we'll start with this one. It's also quite a bit smaller than the other one I just showed you. It's got this green gray coloring over most of its body with the purple detailing on its wings and on its head. It's got a hidden battle damage right here on the bottom of its belly, which is pretty unusual. And because this figure's so old, the wing flapping ability doesn't work anymore, but it's still a pretty unique figure. And here is the other pteranodon figure that I showed you. This one is that dark orange color. It looks like it has some lighter detailing along the tips of its wings and a brighter orange right along the top of its head. And this figure is a basic figure, so it has no button to activate wing flapping or a chomping action either. But you can still move its head around and open and close its mouth. Next up is the ocean dinosaurs, and this next figure is called the Plesiosaurus. Now this one's a bit different because it doesn't have an all blue body, but rather it 
has this tan coloring along the sides and underbelly, and then the dark blue along the top, all the way up to the head. And there's a single action button on its back to flap the flippers. This next land dinosaur is called the Seats Micarerum, and it is a very unique and kind of crazy looking dinosaur. First off, it's got this super bright coloring with the orange on most of its body, and then the dark blue along the top of its back all the way up to its head. It's got a bunch of crazy spikes along its back and the top of its head. And my favorite part of all is this unique set of teeth. When you close its mouth, you can see that this huge tooth right there fits in between the teeth on the top. And this figure has an action where you can move the tail to control the head and to chomp the jaw too. Here are the next sky dinosaurs. Both of these I believe are dimorphodon dinosaurs and we'll start with this gray and purple one here. It looks like its entire body is that gray coloring so not a whole lot going on with the coloring but it does have this nice purple detailing along the bottom side of its wings. But let's compare that with this super bright version right here. It's got this bright red over most of its body. You can see a little bit of dark brown that's on its back and leads up to its head. But the coolest part here is the underside of its wings. Check out that bright orange and that yellow too. Next up for the aquatic dinosaurs is another Mosasaurus, but this one is a whole lot different. This is actually from the Gujitsu series. So most of its body is super stretchy and filled with liquid, and when you squeeze it, you can actually reveal what's inside, which looks like a bunch of fish bones. And the only hard plastic part of this dinosaur is its head, which you can actually open up as well. This dinosaur is called the Sinotyrannus dinosaur, and it is a land dinosaur. This figure is from the Dino Tracker series, and it's got this dark green coloring with a bit of lighter green along the front of its body. But the coolest part is this bright red along its face and way along the back of its tail. And this figure has two buttons on its back. The first activates the tail swinging action and the second activates the jaw chomping action. For the sky dinosaurs, I've got another pair here. Both of them are Dimorphodon figures, but this larger one here is actually an older figure, I believe from the first Jurassic World movie. This figure has a bit of camouflage coloring going on with the dark brown, some of the yellow, and then the green over its whole body. And it's got a battle damage button on its back, which sadly doesn't work anymore, but the wing flapping action on this figure still does. So you can squeeze the legs and it moves its wings up and down as well as chomps the jaw. Now compare that to a newer version of the Dimorphodon figure here. And I believe this one is actually from the Amber Collection. So it's a bit smaller and it has some different coloring. It's kind of a gray blue coloring along most of its back and then the wings fade into this yellow coloring, but the underside of the wings are super bright. It's like yellow, orange, and it's got those red veins everywhere. And this Dimorphodon figure is super poseable too. You can adjust the jaw, the head, the wings. You can even twist the torso back and forth, as well as the legs and the tail. For the ocean dinosaurs, I've got my smallest figures yet. Both of these figures are the Mosasaurus dinosaur in one of its smallest forms. Now the coloring it's pretty basic on this, so most of it is this soft blue coloring with a little bit of darker blue along the top. Although I do have to say the texturing that they did with all the ridges and bumps and especially the spikes on its tail, that's pretty cool. And you can even open and close its mouth too. This land dinosaur, I'm sure you know, is the Therizinosaurus dinosaur. It is a pretty massive figure. It's got the feather texturing all over its body and it looks like it has four different colors on its body. It's got this dark blue, it's got this greenish color for its feet and the front of its neck and some of its head, as well as the white and then the bright red that runs along its back all the way up to its head. It's got those huge claws on its front hands too. And you can move the tail to twist the torso back and forth and there is a chomping action too. Now it's time for some more sky dinosaurs. I've got quite a few more pteranodons and I'm pretty sure pteranodons are some of the most produced sky dinosaurs by the Jurassic World series. This first pteranodon has the brown coloring with the green along its wings. It has the expandable wings and it's actually quite large and it's got two actions on its back. One activates the wing flapping and it's actually got sound effects too, which is pretty unusual. And then it has a second button for chomping the jaw. Then there's this equally sized pteranodon here, but with totally different coloring. It's got the dark blue body, and then it has this dark red coloring along its wings with the lighter detailing right in the middle. And this one has a single action button on its back for the wing flapping. 
And it looks like this one has a speaker for sound effects, although sadly it doesn't work on this figure anymore. And I think these two are the final two Pteranodons of this collection. This first one here is a darker green color. It's got the bright yellow green detailing along its wings. And the texturing on these wings is quite interesting too. There's tons of stripes running back and forth. And it has a single action button on its back for flapping the wings and you can manually open and close the jaw. And then there's this other Pteranodon figure, which is pretty similar aside from the coloring. It's got the gray coloring over its whole body with a little bit of purple detailing along its wings and on its head and its feet. And once again, it has the single action button for flapping the wings. And now here is our final aquatic dinosaur. This is another Plesiosaurus. I think this one is a more recent version of the one that we saw earlier. But this one definitely has some more aquatic coloring it's got the lighter underbelly and then the dark blue body over everywhere else, basically. And you can manually open and close the jaw as well as turn its head side to side. And there's a single action button on its back for moving its fins. And here is our final land dinosaur. This is the Pentaceratops. It looks quite a bit like a Triceratops with the frill on the front and that it's standing on four legs, but it's got a much larger frill and I think a lot more horns than the Triceratop does. Plus there are two action buttons. The first swings its head up and down in a huge stabbing action and the second swings its torso side to side. And here's our final sky dinosaur. This little dinosaur is called the Ramphorhynchus. It has the brighter colored wings. It's kind of a green yellow coloring with some interesting detailing and texturing and its body is a darker green coloring. And there is no action button on this figure, but you can manually open the mouth and move the head up and down. You can move the wings manually as well and you can move the back legs too. First up, we're gonna go with the massive Giganotosaurus. And the inaccuracies of this dinosaur have to do with its outer protective layer. You can see this big spine and all these spikes running along its back, and it's speculated that the Giganotosaurus didn't quite have what's shown in here and in the movies. In addition, the arms might have actually been smaller than what was shown here and in the movie. And in Jurassic World Dominion, it was said that the Giganotosaurus is the largest terrestrial carnivore, but it's still widely debated whether it was the Giganotosaurus, the Spinosaurus, or the T-Rex. Next up, we're gonna go with the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the first inaccuracy is that it is speculated that T-Rexes actually did not have the iconic roar that you know from the movies, but rather it used low pitch rumbling noise to communicate. And it is also thought that T-Rexes had a thin layer of a feather coating on their body, which if you saw the prologue in Jurassic World Dominion, you saw that they did add that in. And this figure right here is the Terran T-Rex with this massive tearing action. And I've also got this slightly smaller T-Rex with the battle damage and the orange coloring on its body. Check out how wide that jaw opens. Next up is the mighty Spinosaurus dinosaur. This is another one of the dinosaurs that might have been one of the largest terrestrial car Carnivores. And what might be inaccurate about this figure and the Spinosaurus in the movie is the tail. They think that the tail now had a more paddle shaped instead of kind of a more narrow round shaped tail. And this specific Spinosaurus figure is pretty special because this is the Battle Damage Edition Spinosaurus that you can open up right here to reveal the battle damage underneath. And you can even press this button to spin the insides. Next up is one of my favorite carnivores, the Carnotaurus. And what might be inaccurate about this dinosaur is that it might have actually been a more slender dinosaur than this muscular dinosaur that you see right here and in the movies. And this figure right here is actually the epic attack Carnotaurus. So there's a button on its back for the chopping action and these hidden buttons on its side for more sound effects and lights. And I also wanted to throw in an older version of the Carnotaurus from Jurassic World here. Still has a very identical coloring, but on this figure, you can move the tail around to move the head and to chomp the jaw. Next up is the Allosaurus. And this figure is from the Epic Evolution series. So a really cool feature it has are these spikes that actually pop out of its back, which obviously probably isn't true to real life, but it's pretty cool. But another inaccuracy in both some of the figures from Jurassic World and in the movies are its wrists. Sometimes the wrists are shown facing upwards like this or supinated. And at other times the wrists are shown pronated or facing downwards. And it is thought that they had supinated wrists like this figure, but in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, they showed the wrists actually pointing downwards. I've got a few other Allosauruses in this collection that we can check out and compare as well. You can see that 
both of their wrists are kind of facing inwards to the side, and both these figures are quite a bit smaller than the Epic Evolution figure I showed you. But they each still have their own chomping action, which is pretty cool. And this one's got a slide lever action with sound effects. <laughs> The next Jurassic World dinosaur with inaccuracies is the Apatosaurus dinosaur. And in the first Jurassic World movie, the Apatosaurus was shown to be chewing its food, but they don't do that. In real life, they actually swallow it whole, and then they use stones in their stomach to help digest it. And of course, in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the Apatosaurus was shown to be running, which probably could not happen given their gigantic size, as well as their massive weight. Next up is the Therizinosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. And this dinosaur was actually pretty accurately represented in the movies. Although there is some speculation around the shape of its eyes and the strength of its claws as well. And this Therizinosaurus figure has some pretty cool actions. First, you can press down on the tail for this little chomping action. And you can move the tail side to side to swing the torso back and forth. Next up here is the Tarbosaurus dinosaur. And the first inaccuracy of this dinosaur is this row of spikes running down its back. The Tarbosaurus did not have that in real life. And when it showed up in Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure, the Tarbosaurus was depicted as a lot larger than it was in real life although it still is quite a large dinosaur. Next up, we've got another super famous dinosaur from Jurassic Park. This is the Dilophosaurus. And first off, the Dilophosaurus in the first Jurassic Park movie was way smaller than it was in real life. And also the movies depict the Dilophosauruses as having these frills and poisonous venom that they can spit. Whereas in real life, they had neither of those things, actually. I also included a smaller version of the Dilophosaurus in this collection. This one has the gray coloring with the red on its frills, and an action where you can move its tail to activate the frills and open its mouth. Next up is the massive Stegosaurus dinosaur. Now in Lost World, the Stegosaurus was depicted as larger than it was in real life. The movie showed it to be around 40 feet long, but they only grew to be around 30 feet. And interestingly, in Camp Cretaceous, it was said that the Stegosauruses shed their dorsal plates once a year, kind of like a deer and their antlers. However, I don't think there is any evidence for that actually happening in real life. Next up is the Velociraptor dinosaur. Now in the Jurassic World films, it was shown that the Velociraptors hunt in packs but in reality, there isn't any evidence to show that they hunted in packs. Furthermore, in real life, Velociraptors were actually covered in feathers, and they probably weren't as intelligent as the movies made them out to be. Next up are the Atrociraptors. I've got the small version right here, and the large basic version right here, both in the same coloring. And in the Jurassic World movies, these dinosaurs had many of the same inaccuracies as the Velociraptor, such as they are a lot smaller in real life, and they probably didn't hunt in packs, at least as far as we know. I've got another pair of raptors here. These are the Pyroraptors, made popular by the Jurassic World Dominion movie. And once again, I've got a large basic version right here, and then the smaller version right here, and this one's actually a battle damage version. You can click the battle damage on and off. Now you may remember that this dinosaur actually swam in Jurassic World Dominion, but that's not actually known whether they actually did in real life. And these dinosaurs were a bit smaller than what was shown in the movie too. Next up is the Cynoceratops. Now there's not a whole lot that's inaccurate about this dinosaur, but there is some speculation, especially from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, about the number of holes in their frill and the location of those holes as well. Next up is the mighty Kentrosaurus dinosaur. And if you watched Camp Cretaceous, you'll remember Pierce the Kentrosaurus, and the main inaccuracy about that dinosaur was the size. Pierce was probably twice the size as Kentrosauruses are in real life, so they were a lot smaller when they lived out in the real world. And here I've got two Ceratosaurus figures, each with their own coloring. I've got the gray, red, and brown one right here, and then the dark green one. And in Jurassic Park 3 and Camp Cretaceous, the Ceratosauruses were shown as larger than what they were in real life, and you can see these horns on their heads right here. Those were thought to be more crests than horns in real life. Here is a more unusual dinosaur. This one is called the Corythosaurus. And in Jurassic Park 3, it was shown that they had separated fingers rather than more hoof-like hands. In addition, in real life, they have keratinous beaks, which are beaks made out of keratin. Next up is the Ankylosaurus species, and I've got two different figures right here. The first inaccuracy is that Ankylosauruses in real life do not have these massive spikes on their side which is kind of a disappointment because they look so cool. And secondly, in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, they were shown to be running, whereas in real life, it's very unlikely that they could run due to the size of
of their legs as well as the massive amount of armoring that they have on their body. Next up is the Triceratops. I've got this figure with the brown and blue coloring and this figure and the Triceratops in the movies are a bit inaccurate in that only the juvenile Triceratops had these spikes running along the outside of its frill. And this figure here actually has a pretty cool action where you can move the tail to move the head around and get sound effects. The next dinosaur I'm gonna show you in this collection is the Brachiosaurus. This dinosaur figure is massive and is from the Jurassic World Dominion collection. And the inaccuracy of this dinosaur in the movies was that in Jurassic Park, it was shown to stand up on its two back legs Whereas in real life, that would not be able to happen because of the weight and the size of this dinosaur. Here I've got an Iguanodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion. And the inaccuracies of this dinosaur in Jurassic World Dominion was that it was shown that they have a flexible tail, whereas that's probably not so in real life. And they were shown to have claws on the front feet rather than hooves. I think this is a really cool dinosaur though, and it is one of my favorite herbivore species. Here is an Albertosaurus dinosaur. Got the green body with the red coloring along the top of its head and its back. And the inaccuracy of this dinosaur is that in Jurassic Park Builder, which was a game they created that you can sadly no longer play, they showed the Albertosaurus to have three fingers instead of two. So this figure is actually correct. And this figure is pretty cool too, because it is the battle damage edition, so you can see a slash on its leg right there, as well as this hidden door that reveals its stomach and the ribs that you can pull up and down. Next up is the Edmontosaurus dinosaur. Now in Jurassic World Evolution and Jurassic World Evolution 2, there were a couple inaccuracies. First was that its tail was actually pretty flexible in Jurassic World Evolution, whereas in real life, it's a lot more stiff. And Jurassic World Evolution showed them to have claws on their front feet, whereas in real life, it was more like hooves, just like this figure here. And like many of the other herbivore figures that I've shown, you can move the tail on this figure to move the head around in a super lifelike way. This next dinosaur is the Concavenator, and this one is actually from the Hammond collection, so it is pretty cool. In Jurassic World The Game, it was shown walking on all fours, but it could probably not do this in real life because of the direction of its wrists. And actually with this figure here, it is shown with four fingers, whereas in real life, they only had three fingers. Next up is the Pachycephalosaurus dinosaur. And although I don't think there's too much that's inaccurate about this dinosaur, in Jurassic Park Explorer, they showed this dinosaur to be way larger than it was in real life. These dinosaurs are pretty cool though, and this figure is pretty cool because it actually has a tail action for activating the headbutting. And here is the Herrerasaurus figure. And the inaccuracies of this dinosaur is that in Jurassic Park, the game, this dinosaur was shown with wrists that face downwards towards the ground or pronated wrists, as opposed to these supinated wrists or facing to the sides and upwards. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.